is good. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. If you could just last minute people find your seats. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Sweet. Okay. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the ninth annual Safe Sports Social. Tonight is about a collaborative team effort to keep kids safer. We have a full program, so I'd like to get started right away. I just want to take this moment to thank you for all coming out tonight to celebrate each other's commitment to keeping kids safer and on track for success. Our goal tonight is to introduce you to the kids and the families that you have impacted through your support and your contributions. I hope that tonight you will see that sports are more than just a game. They help kids succeed now and into the future and your impact lasts a lifetime. So I didn't end up 
at a D1 school. I ended up going to college in Brunswick, Maine. It's a Division three school in the NASCAP conference, and I couldn't be happier there. So the good news and bad news in this is that Tim did really well. Uh, he was able to go back to playing football and play at the collegiate level. I say the bad news because then I worry about him every time he goes back out there. Even now, I'll send Eric a quick little text or a video of Tim at the college level saying, thank you, we appreciate it. And I can't say enough great things about the, the people at Safe Sport. So one of the reasons that Tim did so well is that the care he received from the very beginning, from when that injury happened all the way through to the end of his rehab, uh, was the extra help input and guidance he got through his athletic trainer and what Eric did with Tim. Uh, I have no doubt that that significantly contributed to his ability to get back to the level that he did. It was important for me to see the whole process through for Tim, you know, being there to support him, you know, from day minute one to, you know, surgery to the rehab process. It was important for me to just see him get the care he needed and to get back to playing as safely as possible. Safe sports and athletic trainers. So safe sports do more than just you know tape ankles and you know, give people ice for you know, injuries and stuff like that. Um, they're there every step of the way through injury rehab, through injury prevention, CPR, heat stroke uh, information. So we understand all that. Um, they're an invaluable resource uh, for athletes, I think. And without them, um, we'd be far worse off. I have two more sons who are going through the Bedford system and very active in athletics and it feels really good to know that Eric is there and the Safe Sports Network is there. Uh, Eric really, I think, helped our family in more ways than he knows. Yeah. So I'm a college football player now, so it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool feeling. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Pete Galamaga, and uh, that was uh, uh, that's me. That was my, my son up there, and um, I just I, I, I'm not going to repeat the story, but I really want to talk about just say that um, this is not just about the athletes. This is for me. This is about you're impacting families, uh, and then extension of the family, the the community. This is really an important thing. I don't know where we would have been uh, without Eric and Safe Sports. They, that was a long journey, and literally from the first minute up into, it hasn't ended, because we're still in touch with everybody, but um, I don't know what we would have done without them. And, uh, it's a, and now, as a parent, and as some of you might know this, I'm on the sidelines, and because of what I've gone through, whether it's basketball or football or soccer, and I see a kid go down, I get that feeling in my stomach because I know what that family is about that might be about to face. And I, now that I know who's out there to help them, it really, I can take a deep breath and I see Eric, my son went down on a, a basketball game, he's fine, but I, I, Eric was there. And that is incredible, incredible effect that it has on, on everyone. And I, I, our appreciation, we can't even, there's no way to even uh, properly describe it. So with that said, um, I want to talk about uh, other folks who are here in the room tonight. We've got the ambassadors um, who are also affected. We've got a lot of those around. I don't know if we got the show of hands or who those people are, uh, who are who've been helping out and been affected and impacted. Um, and they're, what are they here to do? They're, you know, the mission for them is to encourage students to leverage the characteristics and skills gain through sports to help them succeed in life and become leaders in their communities. I've got another son who was, who was also a safe sports ambassador, so I know that's a great thing. Um, also, on your tables, you'll notice that there are uh, perseverance athletes. There, you can find different stories and different uh, stories. And again, for me, um, I'm, a, I'm a parent, I'm a teacher, and I know how these things, the impact. It's, it's the student, it's the family, it's the community the schools, everything. It's, it's a really, it's a wide ranging thing. Um, so how do the, the donors impact this? Well, that helps continue these lessons learned and the relationships that are forged to, 
you know, that will last a lifetime. And my, my wife is saying, you know, we'll be on the sideline and we'll, we'll bring up Eric on, and, and Dr. Dr. Sahikian, they, they're, the, they're, it's gonna be for the rest of our lives, we'll remember that. Okay, so with all of that, I am going to start something called Fund the Need. And we'll hear a little bit, by the way, some more about the things from our keynote speaker, some of the things I spoke about here. So tonight, we have an overall goal for 75000 for this event, and we need your help to get there. Um, this portion will allow you, the donor, to publicly show your support for the program to ensure kids have these services far into their future. And again, I'm going to keep saying the kids have the services, the families, the community all get this service. Uh, and uh, so we're asking you to raise your bid numbers on the back of your programs. Your program books have a number on the back there, and, uh, and you'll raise that at a level that feels appropriate for you. Um, we, we all have some connections to sports, whether it's our, our own experiences. And uh, it's funny, I married into sports. My wife was a college basketball player, college basketball coach. Um, my kids play soccer, they play football, they play baseball, they play, I, when I was in high school I played trombone. So I did not know any of this stuff. Okay, so this was a big, this has been a big learning curve for me. Okay, so, um, so, but, but there's a connection and, and uh, I've seen the impact not only as a, as a dad but as a teacher. My, some of my students uh, are impacted as well. Okay, so I am going to open up the fund the need. Right now it would be for $1,000. We're asking you to raise your books to donate 1,000 so that kids like Michael from WHS will continue to have a safe sports athletic trainer at the school. Michael suffered a serious head injury that warranted an ambulance ride to the hospital and six months of recovery support before returning to sports this spring. So somebody will be coming around. Uh, all set? Okay. Okay, now for those of you able to donate $500, please raise your books now so that kids like Hannah M can continue on to support the, uh, with their athletic trainer as they navigate the physical and emotional needs associated with injuries. Hannah's knee injury almost ended her sports participation for good, while also isolating her from her usual mental health outlets. Fortunately, her safe sports athletic trainer didn't lose touch with her, and even through COVID, to help her stay on track and eventually return to basketball in college. If $250 feels right for you, please raise your books now. Kids like Kelly L. need you there now and into the future. Kelly battled injuries her whole high school career. She often wanted to give up, but the relationship with her safe sports athletic trainer kept her involved on the sidelines and eventually back on the field for her senior game. Kids like these and those pictured on your tables need you. If you can pledge $100 to ensure that they have access to the physical and emotional support they need when they need it, please raise your book now. Injuries can hurt more than you think. When a kid loses their identity and security in an instant, it can be absolutely devastating for them and their families. And lastly, if $50 is the level at which you can offer your support for kids like the ambassadors that greeted you when you entered the event tonight, then please raise your books now in support of this program and the future of our kids. Sports help kids succeed now and into the future. 
And as you will see tonight, your impact lasts a lifetime. Thank you for all your contributions tonight during the Fund the Need program of the event. If you raised your book to pledge your support at a particular level, the slip of paper the ambassador brought you has directions on how to check out at the end of the night. Your pledge has been added to your cart on the online platform. You can check out right on your phone or in person at the checkout table where, when you checked in at the end of the program. The Fund the Need is not the only way for donors to ensure kids can continue to have access to important athletic health care when they need it. Other ways you can make an impact, whether you are at home or in the room tonight, you can make a difference by becoming a monthly donor or a three-year Olympic champion. Bid on a silent auction item or package. The silent auction closes tonight at 7.15. Buy a raffle ticket. For 14 chances to win great prizes for two weeks in June, including the Live Free or Die Grand Prize. I'm going to be honest, I have my eyes on that Fisher Cat suite. I'm just saying. All right. Those of you in this room tonight will also have a chance to bid on some great live auction items near the end of the program. Lastly, you can also fill out the donation envelopes on the tables and put them in the large white envelope with your table number on it. And of course, you can ask any of the Safe Sports staff members for help along the way. Thank you for your generosity tonight. Next, I would like to introduce a person who is a major reason we are here tonight. He is the board president and Safe Sports Network medical director, Dr. James Valis. Dr. Valis. Thanks. Thank you very much, Pete. Can you hear me? So welcome. Thank you all for being here tonight. Um, I'm curious, how many people here played middle school, high school, or college sports? All right. How many of you got injured playing sports? I rest my case. <laughs> so first, I'd like to thank the committee for responsible for organizing this event. This event and the table champions who have done a great job inviting most of you to attend. Table champions, raise your hand, please. Who's the table champion? Thank you very much for getting people here. We couldn't do it without you. I'd also like to thank our current board of directors and recognize our former and founding executive director, Laura DeCossa. Board members, raise your hand. And Laura, please stand up. Yeah, yeah, you get up, Laura. Thank you. Being here. Thank you. We are here tonight because we all share a concern for our kids and our commitment to making sure that they are as safe as possible. I'd like to call your attention to the photos of the Perseverance athletes on your tables again. Every one of those athletes suffered a serious injury but was able to get back to their sports safely. That's where you come in as members of the Safe Sports Donor Team. Your donations ensure kids have the sports medicine care that they need before, during, and after an injury. It all goes together, folks. In this year of COVID, resilience and perseverance have taken on an even greater meaning for our kids. They've all been faced with many challenges and are stronger for it. Also around the room, we have our Safe Sports Student Ambassadors. Please raise your hand, Student Ambassadors, all of you, please. Raise your hands, get recognized. Thank you very much. These students are learning about sports safety. They're volunteering at the community events, which have also continued despite the challenges of COVID. We welcome those 60 new student ambassadors this past fall for the second official year of the program, quite the program. And I'd like to thank this, this year's sponsors of student ambassador program, especially our newest sponsor, Advantage Home Loans, LLC. You will also notice a beautifully painted mug at the center of your table. These mugs were painted by student ambassadors and donated by Richie Allard at your Fired Pottery Painting Studio. One of you will go home with your table's mug tonight, so stay tuned for that. Thank you, Richie Allard.
And last but not least, I'd also want to recognize our safe sports <coughs> athletic trainers for what they do. <clears throat> oh boy. <laughs> um, keeping our kids safe day in and day out. Athletic trainers, raise your hands. That story tells it all. By the way, Tim, go Bears. My son Nicholas was a Bowdoin player. Great school. Good for you. <clears throat> Made that trip many times. <laughs> Obviously, none of this could happen if it wasn't for you folks, the Safe Sports Donor Team. Thank you again for being here tonight. This is the ninth year that the New Hampshire Orthopedic Center has been the title sponsor for this event. Although I'm a partner in NHLC, it may surprise you to learn that I was not, made, <clears throat> I was not involved in the decision making regarding the sponsorship. I'd like to thank my partners for choosing to, to sponsor this event and for their commitment to our kids. Thank you. So with that, in fact, I'm excited to introduce our representative partner from NHOC, our presenting sponsor, NHOC, to express his own words why keeping kids safer is important to the practice, Dr. Peter Vazade. Dr. Vazade attended medical school at Penn State Hershey, completed his residency at Temple University Hospital in sports medicine subspecialty fellowship training at MedStar Union Memorial. He enjoys treating hip, knee, and shoulder injuries, and he specializes in hip arthroscopy. So please welcome Dr. Peter Vazade. Thank you, Jim, and uh, thank you everyone for having me here today. My name is Peter Vazade. I'm uh, one of the new sports medicine trained orthopedic surgeons working out of New Hampshire Orthopedic Center. Uh, I may be one of the newer faces at NHOC as well as here with you at the Safe Sports uh, Network of, of event, but I think we all know how important sports can be, uh, you know, be to, be to kids. We all have some connection to sports ourselves, um, either through our jobs, our children, uh, our hobbies or our own upbringings and backgrounds. And it's safe to say that sports play such a positive role in childhood growth and development. Uh, one of the main tenets of the Safe Sports Network, along with NHOC, is to improve youth sports safety and decrease the overall risk for injury. There's a lot of fun, obviously, to be had out there in physical energy in youth sports, but also because of this, there's always that potential for athletic injuries. One of the main goals for us is to educate young athletes on how to properly harness, transfer, and absorb that energy so we may prevent life-altering injuries from happening. Though this is my first year with you, it is NHOC's ninth year in sponsorship with Safe Sports Network and NHMI, and I am excited to share this evening with you tonight, so thank you, appreciate it. Dr. Vazade. All right, hello again. Um, I'm excited to have the honor of presenting the first award tonight, the Safe Sports Star Award. This award is given to a person who, through words and actions, demonstrates a commitment to ensuring youth sports safety. The 2021 Safe Sports Star Award recipient certainly lives up to that distinction. In fact, this year's winner started his career in youth sports safety as a high school athletic trainer before pursuing his medical, medical degree at McGill University Faculty of Medicine. Dr. Keith Loud is the chair of the Department of Pediatrics for Dartmouth-Hitchcock Health Systems and director of Children's Hospital at Dartmouth-Hitchcock. He uses the term triad to describe his approach to athletic health care. For him, this term means a team that includes the athlete, their parents, and the healthcare provider, and an approach that requires all members to collaborate for the betterment of the athlete. Dr. Loud also participates in an athletic healthcare safety initiative to benefit young athletes across New Hampshire called Team Up for Sports Safety. 
This is a nationwide movement focusing on youth sports safety and injury and illness prevention. Additionally, Dr. Loud serves as a consultant for the Safe Sports Network. He has provided educational talks to our athletic trainers, aided with the development of the Safe Sports and the CHAD COVID-19 Return to Play guidelines, and he collaborates with our athletic trainers on concussion management on an ongoing basis. Dr. Loud recently teamed up with us to produce an informative article highlighting the many benefits of sports participation, both physically and emotionally. He has a true passion for keeping kids safer in sports so they can continue to reap the benefits that sports provide. His commitment to our youth is extraordinary and he is most deserving of this recognition. So it is my pleasure to now present Dr. Keith Loud with the 2021 Safe Sports Star of the Year Award. actual star. So um, thank you, Amy. And uh, I'll call out the ambassadors one more time. Raise your hands. You're getting called out a lot tonight. So almost 40 years ago, I was in your shoes. I was a sophomore in high school, a very poor high school athlete who sustained a minor injury, but was sidelined for the rest of the fall season. I was told to go work with the school athletic trainer to keep my athletic requirement up at, at my boys' school this one for some who might recognize the logo. And, um, and William FX Doc Linsky, oh, someone knows the name? <laughs> Doc Linsky was one of the first members of the NATA Hall of Fame, the first athletic trainer at Northeastern University, and later the athletic trainer for the Cambridge Public Schools, Cambridge Regional Latin High School, uh, famous for Patrick Ewing, perhaps the only athletic uh, star from that school, Matt Damon and some others. But uh, my grandmother was the cafeteria manager at, at Ringe when, when Doc Linsky was there. And they somehow transmitted to me one of Doc Linsky's 1959 Pan American Games athletic trainer shirts that he wore when he was the team athletic trainer from that, from that exhibit. Uh, a career was born. I subsequently uh, was working as an athletic trainer, a student athletic trainer in college with Frank George, uh, other names people might remember, another NATA Hall of Famer. And so it was only obvious and natural that after college that I would try and pay my dues and work for three years as a high school athletic trainer, which I only managed to do uh, marginally and adequately. So they had to send me back for remediation and I went to medical school. <laughs> but but the, debt was not, the debt was not served and so it's been really an easy decision and a pleasure to continue to work with Safe Sports and uh, the athletic trainers in New Hampshire and other states where I've lived. So you ambassadors pay attention. You, you could have a lifelong career uh, started tonight or, or what you're doing. And maybe you won't, but you'll learn some important lessons along the way. For the adults in the room, for those of the rest of us who are in sports medicine, I think the pandemic has taught lots of lessons, one of which is that 100% safety is an illusion. Right? We talk about safer sports. Those of us who practice sports medicine are balancing the benefits, trying to mitigate the risks, but balancing the benefits versus the risks, knowing that we can outweigh, but not always get to zero. And as just as we're very good at helping kids get back in the game, I call upon all of us to get all of these kids back to life. And you guys can take the lead doing that. I appreciate your help. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Loud. Oh, that's better. <laughs> bring the remote, or bring it closer. All right, I'm going to just take a quick minute um, to deviate because we have one of, our, um, one of our board members that is a former board member that was here from the beginning that we didn't get to recognize because with COVID and whatnot when he retired from the board last year. So I'm just gonna ask Steve to come up and, and get a nice plaque from us. just say from the beginning I won't say how many years <laughs> all right 
Next, I'd like to introduce Primary Bank's VP of Business and Development Officer, Dallas LagerQuest, to present the Primary Bank Perseverance Award. Dallas. Well, good evening, everybody. It is so great to see all of you sitting here tonight. And for Tim, a shout out for you. Two years ago, the last social that we all got to attend, you were sitting at our table as the ambassador here. So it's exciting to hear that you're back and playing football. So congratulations to you. So with that said, Primary Bank, we're very pleased that a few years ago when we were starting out that Laura and Dr. Valis said, um, you know, we, they wanted us to do more for them. And I said, well, how about this idea where we do a scholarship? We take a young athlete who has been hurt in their challenges in the, in the field, and when they're hurt, they choose to stay involved and engaged in their team. And so that way there, they are gonna persevere through their, th through their injury and they are gonna stay involved. So with that, we had a young man from Bedford High who had got hurt his freshman day, first practice of high school, and was told he could not do any physical sports. So from there, he chose to be the team manager of that team and stay with him for four years. So this scholarship today is very similar, except it wasn't a four-year injury, thankfully, for this young man. This young man was brought to us from the athletic trainer from Central High School, and he had a major leg injury that um, brought him to not be able to finish his senior year. But what this young man did is he sat back, worked with his doctors. The day that he was released from the hospital, the very first place he asked his mother to go was take me to my practice. I want to see my teammates. I want them to know that I'm okay. So through all of that, he stayed involved the most he could because COVID was there. It was unfortunate. And as a mother of an athlete who was hurt during football, um, I experienced such an amazing um, resource through Eric and Bedford, Dr. Sohikian. Um, our son got the best, the best support through when he was hurt. And not only do they help you in the, in the high school and in, in the, um, not the classroom, but on the field, but they, they may stop in the high school and visit with these kids and then say, well, tell your mother to go and reschedule the appointment. We don't need them to come into the, into the, um, into the therapy today. And so that is a financial savings that the Safe Sport organization will give to some families when they're, they're a benefit of the Safe Sports Network system. So with that said, this young man, Michael Adams from Central High School, it is my honor with my colleagues here tonight to congratulate him for the 2021 Perseverance Scholarship Award. parents would like to say that we hope that our children will always persevere through any challenge that is presented to them. So we wish Michael the best today and always as he moves forward and perseveres through anything that is presented to him. Congratulations, Michael. Thank you, Dallas. Okay, it occurred to me, I didn't even introduce myself. That wasn't in my remarks, so. <laughs> I gotta talk to my writer. <laughs> so, hopefully you all know who I am. Um, I'm Amy Hollingworth, I'm the new executive director here at Safe Sports. I've been involved with Safe Sports for many years, as you'll hear in my story, um, and been involved as the executive director since August. So uh, thank you, and thank you for being here, and uh, if you were wondering who I was, now you know. <laughs> All right. All right, well, I did really want to lead with, wow, what a year it's been, really. It's been an interesting up and down roller coaster, good and bad, um, and everything in between. But it's been an incredible honor leading this team over the last year. I've enjoyed working together to overcome the many challenges we've all faced. The incredible resilience of our kids, our staff, and our community has been amazing. Through it all, the Safe Sports mission has remained steadfast. 
keeping kids as safe as possible so they can make the most of the opportunities that sports offer. The challenges were different, but the results were the same. Kids reaping the many benefits of sports and donors like you coming together to make sure that it could happen. Tonight is my first public opportunity as a Safe Sports Network Executive Director to extend my heartfelt thanks for your partnership and your commitment to our kids. Although this is my first year in this role, the safety of the kids in this community has been my passion since my career started with this very organization over 20 years ago. I think there's something about standing here that makes you emotional. <laughs> Over there, it's not so scary. <laughs> but I am proud to say that I was part of the first wave of athletic trainers who helped improve kids' access to athletic health care by being on site at schools here in the city. I spent many years on the sidelines and in the athletic health care facility talking with kids, mentoring them, and connecting with them. I've experienced the low points during devastating injuries when kids' identities are robbed in an instant, and the high points when teams come together to lift each other up and everything just clicks. I've, al I've also witnessed firsthand that none of this can happen without our safe sports community behind us. Donors like you make it happen. You saw in the video that it's not just about caring for the physical needs of an athlete. It's about caring for the whole person and the whole family. From the point of injury, through the journey of recovery, and the return, and then far beyond. You, as sponsors and donors, ensure our kids have appropriate emergency plans in place and access to physical and emotional care when they need it. So thank you. Thank you to our three-year Olympic champions. Thank you to our monthly donors, our individual and corporate donors. Thank you to everyone who donated a gift for tonight's raffle or tonight's auction and our raffle that's coming up in June. Thank you to the Safe Sports Student Ambassadors. They have spent this year learning and carrying the sports safety message to their teams and their communities. They've collectively volunteered over 150 hours in person and through virtual events. Thank you, Sydney Levine. Sydney has not only don donated her time to take pictures tonight, but she's also donated a silent auction package. So check that out. And thank you to our athletic training staff. We certainly couldn't do it without you. We need the donors, but we need you to carry our mission to the kids. So thank you. One final thank you to the foundation sponsors, Apple Therapy Services, New Hampshire Orthopedic Center, and Bedford Ambulatory Surgical Center, whose annual contributions keep kids safer every day. I'd like to recognize the incredible commitment of our title sponsor, New Hampshire Orthopedic Center, who, as you heard, has supported this event since it started nine years ago. Thank you to this year's All-American sponsors, CoreFlex and the Dairy Field. <coughs> Thank you to this year's Allstate sponsors, Acapella Technologies, Anagnost Companies, and Cross Insurance, Dartmouth-Hitchcock Health, and Millennium Running, and our print sponsor, New England Duplicator, and Retrieve, and the Union Leader. And thank you to our keynote sponsor, Catholic <coughs> Medical Center, and our checkout sponsor, Children's Hospital at Dartmouth-Hitchcock. And thank you to all of our varsity sponsors. Thank you all again for coming tonight. I look forward to continuing our partnership for the safety of our children far into the future. So now, if I can borrow a quote from Mike Rowe, I'm looking forward to the future and feeling grateful for the past. So as many of you know, last year saw the retirement of a cornerstone at Safe Sports Network. <laughs> We'd be leaving a gaping hole in the program tonight if we didn't recognize the person who has been instrumental in leading the charge to keep kids in our community safer and thriving for nearly three decades. 
So I'd like to ask one of our long-standing board members, Dr. Margie King, to come up to say a few words about NHMI's founding director and newly retired, and soon to be crying, Laura <laughs> DeCosta. So it is my honor and privilege to be doing this. Um, and apparently there is something at the podium. <laughs> so at any rate, I just want to give you a brief overview of everything that Laura's done. It, I can't go into um, substantial detail, but this PowerPoint is going to be um, upload it to YouTube so that you'll be able to, um, to see it. Um, but I, just to let you know what has gone into this entire organization. So it started off with just an idea. And with that idea came Safe Sport Network and the initial um, thought process in uh, 1989 is when this all kind of came together. Uh, and the, and the drop-in clinic started way back then as well. And then we had the addition of the New Hampshire Musculoskeletal Institute component of this, and that was in 1993, and that was right about when I got involved in it. And it's been a fabulous experience ever since. Um, but with that, we established a mission which was always focusing on keeping the athletes safe. So we needed to deal with this directly with care and support programs, which is um, Safe Sport Network and indirectly through providing the medical education, research, and services uh, for those of us who are caring for the athletes. With that, though, we kind of need a little bit of leadership because we had these great ideas and no one to execute. So in comes Laura, who, who has done this laundry list of things that you'll see in a moment to bring this organization to where it is right now. So nearly 30 years of growth and accomplishments we did a, a ton of work with medical continuing education, and I have been a recipient of that and love it. Um, we have a fall symposium every year for allied health, and then we have a um, winter symposium every year, which is surgically based phys, um, for the physicians, but I, I love going to that one too. It's a wonderful way to stay up to date with everything that's going on. We um, also have been involved in, uh, in research. And when I say research, it's not just going to the library and reading a couple of articles or looking at a book. I mean, I'm talking hardcore, down and dirty, national level research. So these folks who have been involved with the Institute and with Safe Sports have actually presented on the national level um, across the years and have manuscripts published across the years. And, uh, manuscript publication in national um, level journals. So um, along with that, they have landed research grants, which if you think that the presentations and the publications aren't enough, those grants are pages and pages long worth of work. And just because you submit your grant doesn't mean you're going to get funded. So they have done a fabulous job, and they're extremely competitive on the national level, which is just incredible to think. from basically small town in, in uh, New Hampshire can compete nationally, but we do. Uh, then, uh, just to add to it, that we wanted to make sure that the athletic training profession had some support and they created a residency program for the, ath uh, for the athletic trainers who uh, would come in each year. Um, we had the first two first residents early on and um, have continued all the way through. And, and if we had enough of time, I could go through the laundry list of successes with the residents who have left from this program um, and gone to do just fabulous things on a national level, all being mentored by Laura and her staff. So it's just, it's and Jim, obviously. Um, it's just been incredible. Along with that, then um, again, this small little town in the state of New Hampshire, uh, had for the first nationally recognized KD accredited, which is the accrediting body for athletic training, residency program in the entire country. So that is um, to be commended and it is more than groundbreaking. It's incredible. Um, with that, Laura has kept a really high bar and her staff have a tendency to follow behind. And so we've had, you know, Amy is, um, had received the, the New Hampshire's Most Distinguished Athletic Trainer Award, and Eric had received the uh, Gatorade Secondary Athlete, uh, Athletic Training, Secondary School Athletic Trainer Award, 
and um, Sandy is just has been wrapping up um, her presidency for the state of New Hampshire. So just a crazy amount of involvement, but it's because they had a mentor who, in of herself, has received awards on the state level and national level, both for athletic training, continuing education, manuscripts, um, and service. I mean, it's just it's incredible. So with that, um, you can see the, the myriad of things that have been added over the years under uh, Laura's leadership to, uh, to continue to bring safe sports to the, the athletes of this community. Took two slides to get through all that stuff. Right? So they've been at it for a while, and every year they seem to just add a little bit more. It's, it is phenomenal. I don't know any other place in the country that gets this type and quality of care for their student athletes. And then they've also extended themselves to the youth leagues, so not just the, the formalized uh, high school programs, which is also um, incredible because they are uh, so poorly underserved. In addition, Laura added the ambassador program, which uh, gave the, uh, the student athletes a chance to give back and to participate into the, with the very organizations that are supporting them. And it grows in, over the years and has developed just phenomenal leadership before this, the kids even leave for college. It's, um, again, another fabulous program that we've got going here. So with all of that, and I could go on for more than minutes, um, I, I just want to say thank you to Laura for, for leading us all and uh, for directing our ship in a direction that's been nothing but success year after year. And it's just been a pleasure to be a part of this organization. So thank you for your leadership, your time, your commitment, and just for you being you. You guys saw my name up on one of those slides, but I was also on the slide that was the first New Hampshire native in 19. <laughs> so I was on two slides. All right. So in addition to recognizing Laura for her incredible commitment to the kids, I'd also like to recognize another former staff member, volunteer, longtime avid supporter, and generally caring and compassionate friend who also left a gaping hole with her retirement. It hasn't been the same in the office without you, Char. Thank you for all your years of service for our kids, and I have a small token of appreciation for both of you, so thank you. return to her seat, but you might have to get back up. I have one more order of business to attend to. This year, we have created a new Safe Sports Network Award. This award is designed for a junior or senior Safe Sports student ambassador who embodies key characteristics of the organization's founding executive director, Laura DeCosser. Laura, don't do that. <laughs> All right, as you just heard, Laura spent her career in service to the young athletes in Greater Manchester. Her passion for keeping kids safer in sports so they could reap the many benefits that sports provide was evident in all aspects of her life. Whether it was done directly in providing athletic health care herself or indirectly in educating others who would in turn provide that care, Laura's leadership and dedication to the safe sports mission is unmatched. Making connections, mentoring, and making an impact on her community have always been very important to Laura. Thus, the recipient of the Laura C. DeCoster Award must be a young lady or gentleman that embodies that same spirit and beliefs. This award is given specifically to a student ambassador who has gone above and beyond in promoting sports safety in their communities. The recipient must be an active member in the Safe Sports Student Ambassador Program 
as well as a leader among their peers and within their communities. This year's winner certainly deserves that distinction that comes along with being the first to receive an award. He was not only nominated by three different Safe Sports staff members, but also recognized by his peers for his leadership and initiative within the Student Ambassador Program. My first experience with this recipient was during a visit to his school. He was helping out in the athletic training facility before the Ambassador Program was actually even an official program in his school. That day, he went out of his way to express his interest in sports safety and in generally helping wherever it was needed. From then on, whenever I saw him at any ambassador event, which was many, he made the effort to say hello and show how appreciative he was for the opportunities that were made available to him because of the program. This young man is full of energy and passion. He has volunteered at and attended in-person and virtual events, created videos, posed for pictures, found creative ways to thank donors, and even shadows his athletic um, his safe sports athletic trainer. He truly cares about his peers and his community. He gives back and pays it forward, and he has been a great advocate for sports safety and our program in general. This year's inaugural Laura C. DeCoster Award goes to John Brennan. Congratulations, John. It's always wonderful when we can recognize a kid for all their amazing contributions to their peers and within their community, which leads me nicely to our next speaker. Our keynote speaker this evening is a former Memorial High School athlete, Safe Sports Student Ambassador, and Perseverance winner, among many other things. Sydney was a four-year field hockey player, captained her field hockey and lacrosse teams, and led the student athlete leadership team at Memorial High School. Many of you have heard about Sydney, whether it was about Sid persevering through an injury, being awarded, awarded the Latounder Scholarship to attend a student athletic training camp, or one of her experiences as a Safe Sports Student Ambassador. But you, what you may not know is that Sydney logged over 50 volunteer hours in just one year, not only because she's genuinely a really great kid, but also because she wanted to give back in honor of all the support and opportunities she's had because of Safe Sports donors like you. I'm going to let Sydney take it from here so that she can tell, her, tell you in her own words about the impact that you've had on her life. I'm so happy to welcome tonight's keynote speaker, Sydney Spinard. Thank you, Amy. Day one, stepping on the field as a freshman on the varsity field hockey team, as you can only imagine, was exciting and nerve wracking. I never thought that I would experience an injury my freshman year that would take me out of a game for a few months. Being an athlete and experiencing an injury isn't always easy to get through. However, I had a great athletic trainer by my side every step of the way to get me back to the game and the sports I love. I wouldn't have had that athletic trainer or any athletic trainer if it wasn't for you donors in Safe Sports Network. Unfortunately, my injuries didn't stop there. I was constantly battling against injuries, but persevering through them all because of the well-trained athletic trainer's support. Now I'm a sophomore playing for Plymouth State field hockey. I honestly didn't think I would make it this far with the injuries I endured, but I was never alone. Not only has Safe Sports given me the opportunity to have an athletic trainer by my side, as well as with all the other athletes at practices, games, and even rehab, but they gave me an opportunity I never thought I would have. I joined the ambassador program my sophomore year. Not knowing a lot about it, I was willing to help Safe Sports in return for all they do for athletes within the community. I volunteered at concussion testing, races, 
events, and even the fun scavenger hunt downtown through the program. I had a fantastic experience helping out the community all while having fun. Being an ambassador opened many doors for me. I shadowed Safe Sports Network athletic trainers at games to get an inside look behind the scenes and watch real action as it happened. I learned what to look for during basketball games, such as their form and movement that are more prone to injuries, where to look on the court, perform CPR, use an AED, and know the signs of heat illness, stroke, and exhaustion. Even though I couldn't be hands-on with the athletes as a high school student, it was very beneficial and helpful for me to learn what athletic trainers do and how to react. One exciting event was simply running to my athletic trainer's car to get crutches for an ACL injury during a basketball game, or even just making ice bags. Sarah, who's not here today, I remember I got to shadow her for the first time during a basketball game and someone had a bad nosebleed. Even though I couldn't touch the athlete, just handing her gauze was exciting. <laughs> I got many hands-on experiences and shadow experiences, and I made relationships with Safe Sports Network and all the athletic trainers. After spending hours, days, weeks working on my injury and rehab and watching my athletic trainer work with her athletes to get stronger, I knew then this is what I wanted to do as a career. I wanted to help athletes like myself get back to playing the sport they love, all while helping them both physically and mentally, just like my athletic trainer did for me. In 2019, I was awarded the Latende Scholarship to attend an athletic training camp of my choice. I went on to attend a camp in North Carolina for a few nights. There I got certified in CPR, AED, first aid, basic taping, wrapping, wound care, and so much more. I had the best experience and I'm extremely gr grateful for that opportunity. I wouldn't have been able to partake in these opportunities without the help from you donors and Safe Sports Network. So thank you for making it all possible. I am now approaching my sophomore year at Plymouth State University in majoring in athletic training with a minor in psychology. First year down with an amazing GPA and not to brag, but because of the opportunities I had and received through Safe Sports. I was ahead in my classes and sounded pretty smart because of how much I already learned. But don't worry, I have a whole lot more to learn and I can't wait to be able to help student athletes and watch them succeed. To all the athletic trainers and staff at Safe Sports that I have got to know throughout the years, thank you for teaching me, letting me be part of Safe Sports and giving me the opportunity to learn and help whenever I could, but most importantly, for the great laughs along the way. Sandy. On behalf of my parents and myself, thank you for not just teaching me who and what an athletic trainer really is and does, but teaching me about every possible thing that could happen in life, like how to cook in college. <laughs> <laughs> and pushing me to do my very best in everything I do. Thank you for being my mentor and being by my side every step of the way all four years. Thank you for the many laughs that we had, but most importantly, thank you for the overall kind person you are, for being a friend and someone to talk to. If I hadn't met or worked with any of these athletic trainers and members of Safe Sports Network, I wouldn't have had the opportunities I did, and I wouldn't have found the connection and relationship with Safe Sports Network and the donors that supports it. It's because of the donors that Safe Sports is able to help keep kids safer. I forever will have Safe Sports Network as part of my life and will continue to help out and learn whenever I can. For the athletes in this room, thank the donors and thank the athletic trainers and staff. It's because of them that we can play the sports we love and know we will be safe no matter what happens. One more thing, they are athletic trainers. Do not call them trainers or you could find yourself doing 10 push-ups. <laughs> thank you. Okay, that was fantastic. I want. I, I okay, so we're gonna do. You, you add you to action, and you get an auction. So here we go. I just thought that up right there. 
Uh, so, so we're going to introduce here Scott Reed, and we've got a lot of exciting items here, all the a variety of items for you to uh, to to uh, bid on. So, without any further ado, um, by the way, just want to let you know there is a thermometer, if we, if you will, a tracker for uh, as we move up towards our goal. And after the, so I'm just going to hand it over to Scott, and here we go. Thank you, Peter, very much. Amy, thank you so much for uh, inviting me back here. This is always a, a fun auction to do. We have just four auction items tonight, so it should go pretty quickly. Um, I just realized my two-year-old son decided to use my auction notes as his little doodle, <laughs> which is obviously nice. Well, usually it's easier to pitch wrong because he actually started on that as well, so it's, uh, it's been enjoyable. But uh, we'll start the auction. Item number one, talk very to me. Right here, round of golf for four at the Manchester Country Club. Lessons uh, in video swing analysis and a $50 gift certificate uh, to Dick's Sporting Goods. This is donated by Manchester Country Club, Brand Capone Apple Therapy, uh, then downtown Manchester, and Dick's Sporting Goods. Who's going to start wearing it with $500? Anybody at a $500 bid to open it with five? 500 here, thank you, and 600 Five here, at six, we we'll do $600. I have 500 in front. 600 thank you, and 700 where? Seven, and now 800 Seven in front, bidding $800. I've got seven here to bid 800 we we'll do 800 Anybody in an $800? 700 in front, how about 750 700 bidding 750 I've got 700 bidding 750 Anybody at 750 first time? 700 bid 750 second time. 700 bid 750 last and final time. All in and all done. I see when you're sitting up front, this is perfect. Sold, bidder number 36 for 700 dollars Auction <laughs> item number two is a Martha's Vineyard getaway. Uh, I don't know if anyone's trying to, to get some vacation rentals this summer, but it is uh, near impossible and very expensive. My wife and I actually had a serious conversation of selling a two-year-old in order to afford a uh, vacation rental. So we've got to start well. It's actually a two-night stay. I should probably read it before I sell it, unless you guys want to use your imagination. But two nights stay is for two at the Attleboro House, located in Oaks Bluffs on Martha's Vineyard. Stay uh, must be during September of this year, booking based on availability. The Attleboro House is a quaint historic inn located among the famous gingerbread cottages directly on the Oak Bluffs Harbor. Originally built in 1874, the inn was completely renovated in 2018. Shops, restaurants, and beaches are just minutes walks away. Each of the 11 rooms in the Attleboro House has to offer a unique space and view. Uh, donated by Billy Regan. Who's going to start with anybody at $500? Anywhere $500 open. And at $500, thank you, at $750 where? $500. Bidding $750, we bid $750. I've got $500 here, bidding $750 to stay on the vineyard. $500. To bid $750, anybody at $750. $500 bid $600 then. $500 here, bidding $600. $500 bidding $600, we bid $600, thank you, at $1,700. $600 bidding $700. I've got $600 bid $700. $600 there. Bidding $700. $700, we'll go $700, how about $650? $600 to bid $650. $600, $650, thank you, and back to you at $700. $650, bidding $700. $650, we bid $700, bidding $700 first time. $650, my right, bidding $700, second time. $650, bidding $700, last and final time. All in and all done, anyway, at $700. Sold at $650, Auction item number three is donated by Jonathan Jewelers. This is a pair of custom 0.87 carat total weight HDC2 diamond stud earrings. The diamond stud earrings here donated by Jonathan Jewelers. Who's going to start with at $2,000? Anybody at $2,000? Anybody at $2,000? Who's going to start with earrings? Anyone at $2,000? $1,000 here. Anybody at $1,000? Anybody at $1,000? Anybody with a thousand dollars to open? A thousand or five hundred bucks and go from there, five hundred and a thousand. Five hundred years bid one thousand dollars for the years. I've got five hundred in front. Bidding a thousand dollars into a thousand. Five hundred. To bid a thousand dollars. How about seven fifty then? Five hundred bidding seven fifty. Five hundred here bidding seven fifty bidding seven fifty. I've got five hundred. Gentlemen, it's a get out of jail free card right here. Five hundred here bidding seven fifty. Anybody at seven fifty? It's a two thousand dollar value. 
Safe Sports Student Ambassador and donated by your fire. of your bill will go to Safe Sports Network a Friendly Toast. It's a great place. I've been there. Tim's been there. It's, it's good eating. Okay, finally, 
Thank you. On behalf of the 6,000, over 6,000 Safe Sports athletes and their families, thank you for those who are tuning in from home. And there are still options. You can still uh, buy the raffle ticket, um, the ra raffle tickets online. So, you, or you can still donate. You can still make a donation. So, that is it. Oh, also, sorry, I had another page. There is the silent auction is open until 7:15. You, you can get those. Oops, wrong. You've got five minutes to get in those last-minute bids for the silent auction. And the in-person options for checkout tonight. On your phone, you can use the link sent through text. You can use your credit card on file or use and add a different one. You can check out in person with staff at the checkout table. And you can pay there with cash, check, or any credit card or a combination. Also, you can use the donation envelopes that are on your table and place in a big white envelope with the table number. And that... Everyone, is it for tonight's event? Thank you all so much for coming and for supporting the Safe Sports Network.